I wasn't whole. I wasn't, like, satisfied in myself, you know? So, like, that's why I feel like I just never was single. I always had to go from one relationship to the next. And, you know, I mean, like I said, it's, like, healthy gaps, like, months maybe at a time. But it's, like, as soon as the next guy came to try to charm me, if he was, like, you know, checked a few boxes, he was in there. This is Sad Boy Radio. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sad Boy Radio. I'm your host, Matt. And today, we got a very special guest. Hey, like Darian said, we're recording on a Friday, not a Wednesday. Um, yeah. We got a very special guest, host of Tea Time with Jazz. Ah! Previous cover of Tidal Rising R&B artist. And recently released her song, Perfect, with OG Steve-O. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Jazz, everybody. Hello. How are you? I'm here to get, you know, nice and intimate with my boy. We're going to talk about a lot of good things. Stay tuned. Hey, sad boys for real. It's about to be a real <laughs> sad boy episode. Talk about the song, man, real quick. You know, how to come together finally after three years, three years in the making. Steve-O is a great friend of mine. Like, he's just a really solid dude, you know, in general. So over the years, you know, just like seeing his growth, seeing my growth, it just made sense. We've always wanted to collab. We actually collabed a few times, but this song just kind of seemed like it was special. We got Sticks on the production. He's Grammy Award winning, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it just felt right. And uh, yeah, it was just organic. Like, we put it together real organic. And I, that's what I love. He just won. He just won. Yeah. But I mean, he's been kind of like, he's been in the mix for a while. Mm. He's been drumming for like chants for years and just like, Really solid, you know what I'm saying? Some people get their flowers later on. I don't mean that they not qualified to get them. Hey, shout out Sticks for sure. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to take anything away, but I'm just saying like, hey, shout out him. Like, he just won that Grammy too, so that's raw as fuck. I'm hoping I, could, I can win soon, you know? Even though it's very political. I think like stuff like the Grammys is just kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of biased. Sometimes it can be, but it's not like I don't want to get that type of accolade. Why wouldn't I want to? What do you think it is that holds people back from wanting that? Because, you know, there's been a lot of debate over the years, like if I'm going to submit my catalog or not. It's just kind of like you don't want to feel bad if you don't win. Like, you know, it's kind of like who wants to be let down, you know? And at the end of the day, it's not really about that. I don't even think music should be considered a competition like that to where it's like a sport and, oh, you win this medal if, like, you know. But it just feels good to say I'm Grammy winning. My song was to this caliber, you know. It just, like, feels good, but it doesn't, it shouldn't really matter. Touch on that competition aspect a little bit, right? Because in the city of Chicago, it's very, there's a lot of people that love to collaborate, but at the same time, it is also viewed as a competition. And that can be, a good thing or a bad thing. So for you, you know, you mentioned that you don't feel like it should be. Why not? Music is not a sport. It's like, you know, everybody ha- is going to have their core fan base or their core following or the the listeners who relate to their story. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why are we competing for real? I mean, I don't think everybody's in it to do that, but I know for a fact that there are some people, especially probably in the hip hop scene, or like the rap scene that kind of feel like they probably have to have this certain like, you know, I don't know. I got to eat. I got to eat everything in my way. Like, nah, I'll just be you. But do you not feel like healthy competition can be a good thing? Yeah, I feel like that. I mean, I've been told that actually from an exec, like you need to look at everybody around you as competition. Like, you know, do you think that. This artist didn't contact me and try to get, you know, all of the producers and writers that we use for this album. You know, it's like, I get it. You know, everybody wants to be on the top, but it's like, is that really what it's about? Because if it is, your music just probably sucks. Like, why are you not making it so that you can relate to people? You know, like if you just do it just to like be on top, it's kind of like takes away the point. So with that relatability factor, right? You've mentioned before that you like to feel heard. And with Tea Time with Jazz, that's a new way to connect with your fans. How yeah. have, how have you seen that play out? You know, we just did one episode. It was something I was really really pa- it was like a passion project of mine. Music comes first. You know what I'm saying? Like music really is like my love and passion, but I do like to talk about a lot of things. 
And so we're like, well, let's see, like, you know, what it is, you know, for you to have like a platform. So it's only one episode in, but I do want to take it there where I'm like opening up conversations about religion and spiritual aspects of life. Like, you know, I want to kind of take my voice in music and just turn it into something else because there's so much going on in the world that I just feel like if I limit myself just to like singing, you know, it's just kind of I would be doing an injustice to myself. You know what I'm saying? Having a voice is more than just music for me. It's like, how else can I use my voice to spread awareness of certain things, you know? But it's still real young. It's still a baby. I, I ain't Sad Boy Radio yet. You know what I'm saying? Hey. We trying to get there. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to be bigger than what Sad Boy Radio is right now, you know? It's so. cool. Y'all going to get there, man. Y'all, y'all already well on your way. With Tea Time with Jazz, it's another way for you to express yourself. There comes a new element right there that hey, maybe my music my music doesn't cater to this specific topic. You're a very, uh, R&B is a very love-based genre. Yeah. So it goes to heartbreak, to falling in love, and there's different ways you can spin it. What are some things you found yourself able to express through the podcast that you haven't been able to do through music? I think I'm able to have like freedom of speech and opinion. No, actually, fuck that. I do that with my music too. Can I curse on here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Good. Sometimes my mouth goes that way. Yeah, no, you're um, good. I mean, you talked about fucking somebody's friend on your song, so... I did? Wait, what song is that? What are you talking about? You said, well, to be fair, oh, you no, said... Oh, no, we gotta talk I, about that. You said, no, pause. I could have fucked, some, I <laughs> fucked on your friend, oh, but you... Yeah. I did say that, but I mean, you know, okay, you know what? But I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. By the way, I think, let me just say this. I think it's so weird, like, when you have this breakup and, like, guys come in your, the guys of the the guy you were dating or the friends of the guy you were dating jump in your DMs like, yeah, girl, like, good morning, or. I didn't think that was a real thing. No, they'll literally, they'll literally try to make small talk as if small talk isn't cringy enough. And it's coming from my ex's friends. Would you please leave me alone? Like, you cannot possibly think this is okay. Because I feel like it's kind of like an insult. It's like some guys know, you know, this this woman was off limits, right? And then it's like some that's just probably for, for whoever, like, you know what I'm saying? Just get passed around. But I know, like, I was very special in every one of my ex's lives. So it's like, oh, my God, this is not your friend. Like, sometimes you want to tell them that. But I don't care. I don't care enough. Like, I'm just going to let them have snake friends. I didn't realize that was a real thing until I started hearing it more. I'm like, bro, like, that's just weird. Oh, it's a real thing. It's like, have you been feeling this way this whole time, sir? And you you think I'm going to go along with that? Yeah. So that's what that line was about. It's like, I could have ruined you. I could have finished you. But I chose the high road. (laughs) What would have drove you to that point? How bad could have it been? I don't think anything probably would have done. Like, I don't think I, I I'm not even capable of it. I just think lyric wise, it's just like, you know, same thing as like Jasmine Sullivan, if you're familiar. She has this song called Bust Your Windows Out Your Car. It's like, I don't think she really busts nobody windows, bro. But it's like she was so angry that she like, nigga, I'ma bust the windows out your car. Like, you know, sometimes you get that angry. And then, you know, expressing it in music. That's why we have that, you know? Just like put in the music and you're cool. Those experiences are what's gonna be relatable, right? That that's the whole reason people are listening to this. And creating that is special for somebody else because now you're able to Make somebody look back and be like, damn, this song, this song was the song when I was going through that shit. You know what I'm saying? Certain R&B gets people through hard times, man. It's like, you know, you listen to a song and it just takes everything away because it's like, oh, somebody else has been here before. I'm not alone. You know, like I love having that power and that impact. Like that's the most rewarding feeling to me. What was that for you? What songs or what artists? My music taste is huge. It's fast. We got time. I ain't gonna lie. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of me, G. Like, Chris literally locked me in the studio for two weeks. Like, I didn't even go home. I lived in the studio. It was a bed. It was a kitchen area. It was a studio. <laughs> like At the compound? And I, yeah, and I just locked in and I made probably like some of the best music of my life because that's all I was doing. And... Those songs, some of those songs I just listen to sometimes, like, wow, okay. Like, 
I'm that. I'm that bitch. Like, this is, like, so real. And I can't wait to give it to people. I can't wait. Like, this is just preliminary stuff, y'all. Like, this ain't even the real meat and potatoes, bro. Like, y'all not even getting it yet. What kind of vibes are we getting now? Like, you know, unavailable. I was getting Kehlani. We were listening to it. That's so funny to hear. What are, which, what artists y'all think I sent? You said Ke- I Kehlani? I got Kehlani. I get a lot of different people I'm compared to. I think it's I think it's kind of impressive, though, because it's like they big artists. You got Dang. a unique voice. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, another thing I think about is like SZA, right? But that's probably also the classic connection. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you got that unique voice where... It, it has to be a specific sound and it's going to fit right in, right? Like a SZA, she needs to have that specific sound because of her voice. And when she has that sound, it's going to hit. I think I get compared to SZA a lot because of the look. Like I'm brown skin. I got like the thicker lips. You know what I'm saying? Like SZA's a baddie. I don't, get, I don't mind getting compared. But it's like, I think we're so different. Like I listened to SZA from her, one of her first albums. You know what I'm saying? So... I just know musically we're we're pretty different, but I don't mind the comparison. A hundred percent on the musically, like you guys are different, but what I you get what I'm saying, right? No, on the yeah. voice aspect, you know, your the voices voice, you are think? so no, your voices are so unique in oh. their own way oh. that that's kind of like I see it. And also, once again, like the classic connection, like oh, classic. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, cause like woo woo, boom boom. Let me take a sip to that. Let me pause. You didn't even answer. What have you been able to express in the, your podcast that you haven't been able to do in music? Music is a free place for me. So I don't think it's anything that my podcast will do new other than, I guess, allow me to speak for 20 minutes versus three. You know, like I really base my entire first like topic and everything off of the song man down that whole thing was based on a song so i'm just like you know let me break this down more for y'all because even in that song i was like you know don't go fuck his friends get your money keep your head up like and people might have took that a certain way but i feel like a lot of women try to use their vagina to get back at men and why that's the dumbest shit like he don't care, bro. Like you just you just ran through now. Like he does care. He just doesn't care enough to hold on to it. The thing is just like even if you do that to get back at him, who are you really hurting? You just added a body to yourself and then like now he's looking at you like a slut. So you're not winning, bro. Like you're not winning. I'm sorry. I would n- And then another flex that is not a flex is like the whole I'll take your man. Like, can we stop it, bro? Or I can take your man. Anybody can take someone's man. I'm sorry. Like, if you look good for that day, that nigga gonna look. So it's like, it's not a flex, bro. Like, do you, what makes you feel good because you can, because my man looks at you? Like, I'll look too, bitch. Like, (laughs) if you look good enough, like, it's not a flex, though. Is looking cheating? I have a very unconventional view on cheating. I just think, I'm so cool about certain things. Like, I let my guy go to the strip club. I let him, like, watch special videos. Like, I don't know whatever he wants to do because sex is not, like, the end-all, be-all of a relationship. You know, it's kind of like a small thing. You know, I mean, actually stepping out on me, like, that's different. But, like, you know, I think love is freedom. When you really care about somebody, you want to let them be who they are. You know, whatever that looks like. You know, if he likes women, he likes beautiful women. You know, as long as he's not disrespectful with it. Where do you feel like that definition for you came from, though? I was raised on my dad. Like, I moved, I didn't move to, with my mom till I was like 14, 15. A lot of my foundation came from being raised by my father, a man, you know, like, and I have three brothers <laughs> on top of that. So, yes, I'm feminine, but I just feel like I understand, guys. I understand. To a certain level. A lot of things are pretty simplistic with y'all. What do you mean, though? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, it's it's simple for us. Like, you know, I'm trying to understand you because right now, I mean, shit is pretty simple. But for the people that don't understand it, shit's right. simple for us and you see it. What do you see that's simple that other people you feel like misconstrue almost or misunderstand? I'm not a female that needs a lot of attention. So I feel like I have a lot of friends and it's nothing wrong with that. Like everybody got love languages, right? But like 
some people need that attention and that reassurance more than I maybe do. So I feel like I do have a lot of lenience when it comes to, oh, babe, like, spend time with me or do this, do that. Like, you know, I'm just happy with knowing that, you know, you care and you show me in some way. I mean, we could spend some quality time, but I'm so busy. Like, I'm very busy a lot. It doesn't mean I won't take time out to spend with him or whatever, but it's like, for the most part, I don't make a guy the center of my whole world. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. And sometimes that works for me. Sometimes guys, if they're on my level, they'll find that attractive. And so, um, you know, yeah, it's just simple. Make sure your, your man is pleased. You know, always look nice for them because you guys are very visual, you know. Um, communicate. You're a busy person. You maintain that. You maintain what you maintain. And if you fit into there, you fit into there, right? And I think that that also is guys' logic a lot of the time. We'll go above and beyond when we have to, but at the end of the day, what what is the goal in life? What are what are we focused on right now, right? For me, my my focus and my goal is okay, I'm gonna build this brand up to the biggest possible, the biggest heights we can reach. If you fit into that aspect, if you fit into that and you're willing to come along for the ride. By all means, join the ride. But if it's not something that, you know, you're not cut out for, it's not something you're interested in, it's okay. I had that conversation a lot early on when we started this. And it was, if you find somebody that does everything that you want for you, that you need, by all means, take that opportunity because this isn't going to change anytime soon. You can't change a person. I think that's so raw like what you said is true like I was just having this conversation it may be weird coming from a female side but I think people get so mad when it doesn't work out but it's like we shouldn't be mad at each other like you know I had a guy recently that just felt like you know he had to be an asshole to me because we weren't you know I guess I wasn't giving him what he needed to feel loved or cared for and Me on the other end, I don't think I was getting everything I needed either. But it's like, instead of getting mad at him, I'm just like, well, we just don't pair up. And that's okay. Like, I don't have to call you a bitch. (laughs) Like, you don't have to call me a, you know, it's just like, why are we mad at each other? Like, it's okay. That's the point of dating. Life is about lifing. And, you know, you don't have to make people your enemy because... Something is just not aligned. What was it that you said in your message that everybody loves love, but some people, what was it? People are scared. So everybody loves love, but some people are scared. And I think that's where that idea of this toxic love comes from, right? Because now I want this, but I don't want it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make it toxic. And what's going to happen? The cycle is going to continue and it's going to be created and just go on and on and on. The very like basic part of our existence is love so how can you i just don't understand how people walk around say you know they don't want it they don't need it but i mean i i've been there before i just don't stay there you know because i know like keeping your heart open is just like the goal to everything in life you cannot have a cold heart and think you gonna make it (laughs) like you just gonna be fucked up so i don't know at the end of the day it's just like keeping your heart open keeping it pure Keeping it ready for love in all aspects of life. Like, that's what it's about. Like, you can't close yourself off. You're not doing yourself or nobody around you any justice. You know what I'm saying? But once that idea of love becomes tainted, it's hard to pull yourself out of that. Yeah. Because you always hear that joke, right? Dudes get their heart broken at, in fifth grade and yeah. they hate girls the rest <laughs> of their life. Love can become easily tainted. And I think that for a lot of people, it's hard to learn how to forgive. And for me, I've been in that spot where, because it impacts you in subconscious ways. I've been in a spot where I guess my appreciation for self-worth and self-love had kind of been damaged because of a relationship that I had where I didn't feel appreciated and I never was appreciated. So then when I moved on to new relationships and people were so like interested and wanted to be around, I'm like, bro, why do you like me so much? Like- I'm not I'm not even like I'm not even nice to you 
why do you want to be around? And um, and I just noticed it over time. Like subconsciously, I'm like, this isn't a dumb problem. This isn't really even a me problem. It's a problem that this happened to me and now I have wow. to fix it and I have to fix the way that I look at myself and really, you know, do that self-evaluation. Do you believe that, you know, once you are, you know, attached to that toxic situation or whatever, you attach yourself to not, like, wanting love because you feel like... Okay, this is a better question. Do you feel like someone can be out of your league? Feel like somebody can be out of your league? and Like, physically, like, any way? Out of your league. Like, do you feel like you can date someone and feel like, okay, maybe this I'm not ready for this person? Not like a shot to you, but just like, you're everything I need, but I'm not ready yet. You're in a different place. Yeah. Yeah, I think that one makes more sense. Out of your league kind of sounds like definitely a shot, kind of, right? I've definitely dated niggas out of my league. What? What I think out of your league, I'm thinking looks wise, right? No, I'm thinking niggas like not in my league. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what's the definition of out of your league? There's a lot of fine bums. Let's not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's definitely not all about looks. I've dated guys that are not that handsome, but they just are great people, right? But when we talk about like out of your league, we're talking about just like not a line not in sync with the same business mindset or you know not thinking of the same morals or you know I think when you're not ready to accept love and when you're not in that place it's just never gonna work because you mm -hmm. can't you can't give it back and you can't even accept it for yourself right because you know just like talking about that situation I wasn't able to accept that love from somebody else because mm -hmm. I was just so caught up in this idea of okay I gotta focus on what I'm doing and you're here, but you're not my priority. And right. um, I've been in that situation where, you know, people have been wanting to give me the world. There's a song. Um, I always talk about this song. It's by Aventura. I don't know if you know who Aventura is. Look it up. So Aventura is like this bachata group and they have a song called Yo Quisiera Amarla. And the song okay. is really talking about like that is translates to Spanish. It's in Spanish. So it translates to I wish I loved her. <laughs> and it's basically like, you know, this girl's perfect. This girl does everything I want. She she wants to be with me so bad, but I just don't love her like that. Like, I don't feel that way. You're the perfect girl. Just not for me. I agree. Yeah. That can be a thing. So you would say, to put it nicer, that we're not aligned. But, nigga, sometimes you can be out of your league. Like, <laughs> I could be out of your league. Like, <laughs> it's a possibility. Like, and I'm not even saying, like, as if I'm better. Am I? Are you better because somebody's not ready to be with you? I just think it's levels to this shit. Like, I think that some people have, I think everybody has different ambitions in life and everybody has different beliefs and everybody has, you know, different ways that they go about things. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, saying someone's out of your league can easily change, right? Tables always can turn. But what's the probability of that? Usually people stay the same. I mean, pretty much. Like, For the most fundamentally, part. people are going to stay the same. So when I say that, it's just like, you know, nah, we're not aligned. You know, mm. I guess I could put it nicely and say, we're not aligned. I just think that the out of your league, like, that sounds crazy. Because I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean it's, you can I mean, be, but it's you can be out of somebody's it's, league, right? It's so real. Like, I'm sorry. Like, we want to sugarcoat shit. Like, if I wake up every day at 6 a.m. and work out, and then I work, and then, like, you know, like, work, like, make my own money, and then I'm chasing a side hustle, and then I pray, and then I take care of my family, and then I'm traveling the world, and all you doing is working at Popeye's? That's crazy. You know what I'm yeah. trying to say? No, you're out, you're, like, you're out the league. It's nothing wrong with working at Popeye's, but find someone that works at Wendy's. No, I'm so serious. Like, I don't know. It's like a silly example. Shout out to the people that's working at the fast food spots, man. Uh, my first job was Pop Bellies, so I'm not judging. There's people for every part of your life, though, for that reason. And you grow for that reason. Like, so when I say out of your league, it's just saying, like, you have not reached this level I'm at. And until then, I cannot pause where I'm at. I can't pause what I'm doing to appease you. You know, sometimes you can be stick it out with a person and like try to make it work and 
be there and hold him down. It's like it's got to really be worth it. At that point, I just feel like you're also holding on to something that doesn't serve you anymore. And at that point, you got to learn to let it go and move on, right? And, um, you know, everything in this life, you have to you have to know when enough is enough. And I also want to just say this. <clears throat> when I say out of your league, it's like I've also had a guy that made a t- shit ton of money that was like spending it all on me that I still felt like I was out of his league. So status and things like that don't necessarily equate to that. You know, it's a lot about mindset too. Where are you at mentally? What made you out of his league at that point though? His mentality was very immature. Like, you know, very much still into violence, into drugs, into not taking care of himself. He wasn't spiritual at all. You know, he was missing a lot of those core things that I wanted in a partner, but he could buy me whatever the fuck I wanted. <laughs> so it was cool. But when I woke the fuck up and realized, like, this dude is not on my level. Was that your street dude face? Yeah, he was a little hood nigga. He was a little... It was cool. It was cool. But, you know, I'm just glad I've grown. Relationships have been a constant in your life. Since you were 14, you've consistently found yourself in these different relationships. I didn't know that. Because I know. Because <laughs> I do my research. Hey, Ardbark. What's his name? Nardwar. Ardbark. Nardwark. <laughs> hey, that's a clip. I'm going to throw an Ardbark up there with the Ard- hat. Ardbark. Why do you think you found yourself continuously in these situations? In love? Is that what you call it? Can you be in love with that many different people from the age of 14? Absolutely. Love is completely transferable. It's not always unconditional, but it's very much transferable. It's all about what you're feeling in the moment, right? And goes back to that point of just, like, where you are in life and having somebody that's on that, just, like, feeding you, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, it's definitely been times where I've been attached to something unhealthily. But for the most part, I don't know. I'm a Libra. Like, we love love. Like, we love connection and just, like, you know, having our that person. So I do think I probably could have spent more years of my life single than not. I think all together, I've the like longest I've ever been single is like a year, maybe, maybe. But like that's crazy to think. Like I've never taken like a real break. Yeah, like a year. But even like that year, I've never had like a whole phase. But I was like a straight player. Like, I had my way. I ain't gonna lie. I had my way for a little minute. But it's like that gets tiring too, because it's like. The only reason you really have multiple people in your life like that is if ain't nobody really doing it for real, you know? Like, so you might just be bored. You might have a few people on your line just because it's like, oh, you satisfy this, you satisfy that. But nobody really wants to do that. Like, I just want my one person that just knows everything and, like, is going to get apple juice because he knows I like to drink apple juice. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just want to have, like, my person always. So I'm always on the search of that. That's probably why I end up in those situations. Do you feel like subconsciously there's something that inspired that need and that want to find that person next to you? I crave to be understood. And I know that the world can't give you that. Like, it's you're not meant to be understood by 7, 8 billion people, right? So it's like having that one person that just understands me and just gets me is everything. You know, it's like, oh, like, you know, twin, what have you been? You do. Not for real. Like, I just feel like, you know, I like to be understood by a person because I'm 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 kind of different, you know? And uh when I find a person that like just sees me, it's like wow. How do you feel like seeing the way your parents' relationship turned out influenced your view on love? I was born off of a one night stand. My father was like a star basketball player on like a big college team. My mom worked at Burger King. So Nothing wrong with working at Burger King, okay? After she just shaded the <laughs> fast food people. Hey, that shit's oh crazy. Oh, my God. I did not shade fast food people. Anyways, yeah, so my mom worked at Burger King, and he, I think, like, the team came to get, like, you know, and uh, they hit it off. They obviously had probably great chemistry, but it wasn't, like, a thing for real. And so um, they, you know, tried to make it work. They probably were together for, like, a couple years, me starting out. And my dad's mom was very helpful. So I actually lived with my grandma and my dad for, like, most of my years, actually, like, 
So that was a teenager. And I don't know. I just felt like when it came to relationships, I don't think it's ever been like a whole traditional thing in my head. I don't even want to get like have a big wedding. I just want to elope with my person. You know, does that have something to do with it? I don't know. But I do know Probably. that maybe I do know that um, growing up, I always wanted like, you know, some siblings or like something else around. Um, cause I was like the only child for a long time. I'm just like, you know, I want somebody else around. I don't know. I clicked on with a lot of people at my school for that reason. Um, but I don't mind being alone. So maybe that's a thing for like people who've been raised by single parents. It's like, you know, they have that sense of, um, you know, independence that they get just from kind of like having those moments maybe. Based off of the music. Based off of the videos, right? You got why, where you got your hand tied, one of them. I know you've talked about that before, so we're not even going to go there. But do you feel like your value as a person, the way that you viewed yourself, was influenced by the value you had in relationships and continuously finding yourself in these relationships? I think when you let yourself go enough times, you realize, like, that sucks. Let me not do that again, you know? And you just start finding this self-love that's just like, you know, you can't get away from it. You're just like, I will never, ever let a person walk over me like that again. Like, you can't be so naive. Yes, you can love love and be, like, really good to a person. But it's just like, you have to draw a line. So that was that for me, just to tie into your example. Like, I feel like why was just very much a release. I felt like I was holding myself captive, which is why I was able to let myself go. You know what I'm saying? And it was the best thing I probably could have did. What was it that was holding you captive in that situation, though? Soul ties are real. I think soul ties are real. Like, you can know a person not really good for you and still be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can stick through a lot. Like, a lot of... I've heard before, like, you stay too long. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you stay longer than you should type thing. So um, part of me is, like, always wishing, like, someone will change, you know. Um, I don't know why I take on projects. Not anymore. But I used to, like, take on projects. Like, oh, he'll, I can change him. No, the fuck you can't. Like, a person is who they are. I cannot stress that enough. Yeah, you can grow in certain ways. But, like, a person is going to be fundamentally them, you know. So... If it's just not working, it's not working. I think all of the resentment, though, comes from when a person hurts you. You know, that just incompatibility and it not working can, you know, a breakup can be nice and, like, fair and square if you don't hurt the person. Try not to let it get to the the point where you're hurting someone, you know. Back out before feelings get hurt. And um, I think even if they initially feel that hurt from you pulling away, they'll come back and be like, damn, I respect that because she kept it real with me. And sometimes that resentment is needed. Sometimes you need to feel that resentment to truly, you know, step away and say, this isn't good for me anymore because I don't even feel like myself anymore. We've talked about that before where toxic relationships will turn you into somebody that you don't even recognize anymore. Mm -hmm. No, you, for real. You look in the mirror and you hate yourself. You hate yourself just as much as you hate that person. And you have to feel that anger. You have to allow yourself to be in that space where it's like, you're you're not good for me. And it's either I got to walk away or we're just going to continue this cycle where nobody wins. How, how do you win in a situation where you're both hurting each other every single day? This just sounds miserable. I've said that before. I'm pretty sure where I'm like, you know, you're going to hate me. I'm going to hate you. And at the end of the day, we're going to heal from that. Time heals all wounds. So when you allow yourself to heal from that and you allow yourself to let go, shout out your single let go. When you allow yourself to let go and just realize like, yeah, that person wasn't good for me. Yeah, we had some great times. Yeah, you know, it was fun while it lasted. Shout out KO. But this isn't this isn't what's needed anymore. 
And once you release that anger, once you release that person, now you're able to move on to something better. Once one door closes, another one opens. You know what else I think is just like makes it hard to walk away is because people don't like change. And they feel like, you know, if I leave this person that's a comfortable misery, I'll just be, you know, in a way worse misery. (laughs) But that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that is growth comes from uncomfortability and just like, or comes from uncertainty, you know? So I think just like not resisting change will solve a lot of people's problems. Do you think you were afraid to leave the situation out of the fear of what was unknown? It's scary to think that you're going to be lonely. I mean, nobody wants to be lonely. I mean, in the same sense of me saying I'm independent, I like to do my own thing, you know? When I have my person, okay, let me go do me. But it's like just that security of having my person. If I don't have that, maybe I might feel a little vulnerable. Now I'm out here searching for that void. But um, I don't know. I think I've grown out of that because, like, when I was feeling like that, it was really just because, like, you know, I wasn't whole. I wasn't, like, satisfied in myself, you know? So, like, that's why I feel like I just never was single. I always had to. Go from one relationship to the next. And, you know, I mean, like I said, it's like healthy gaps, like months maybe at a time. But it's like as soon as the next guy came to try to charm me, if he was like, you know, checked a few boxes, he was in there. Seriously, like, you know, I mean, not to say I wasn't picky, but like, you know, girl like me gets options. So I'm going to pick somebody. And uh, I don't think that was all the way healthy, you know, like. I'm glad I'm in the space now where, like, I'm kind of weighing things more. Like, I don't have no kids. I don't have anything, like, holding me to anyone. <clears throat> so I think that's an advantage to me as well. Like, I'm glad I never, like, slipped up in that way. Kids are a blessing, but it's, like, it attaches you sometimes to people who are just not right. And you have to navigate that so delicately. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just, I just don't want to make that move you know where I'm like okay I'm locked in to the point where I'm sharing your seed that's just gonna be big for me I don't know like that's a big thing for me like I don't even know if I wanted to bring kids in this world for a little minute because I'm just like what is this world like what is the world gonna be in 10 years 15 years 20 years like is it gonna be sustainable for a child like I don't know, like a new child when there's already people suffering, there's people in other countries dying, you know, getting bombed to death. America's not different. We're not, you know, excluded from a civil war or like, you know, things happening of that nature. We're very close to a lot of crazy shit happening. So I don't know. I'm just trying to worry about me and influencing the people that are already here. So taking it back real quick, you mentioned that you found yourself in these different relationships because you might have been searching for something within yourself. What do you feel like it was that you needed to find? Reassurance. Um, feeling seen. Feeling understood, you know? It gives me a lot more confidence when I go out into the world and, I don't know, do my thing when I know I have someone at home that just, like, gets it. You know what I'm saying? Versus me having to go out there and not having anybody validate me at all you know just my own validation it's like oh I guess that's cool but you know it's like cool having a cheerleader you know or somebody that supports you I shouldn't say cheerleader because but like a man who supports you that's that's fire even having a, a woman like a lot of times girls get like flack for being broke or whatever but it's like y'all niggas shouldn't be looking at women for money yeah she should be able to take care of herself But the real value for a woman comes from, like, what she's pouring into you, how she's nurturing you, how she's, like, making you feel, how she's building you up. Like, that's really the value of, like, from a woman. Like, you are going to be, as a man, you should be able to, like, take care of things and provide. And the woman should be able to, like, make everything feel like it's just, you know. Whole. Yeah. She's the glue. You know what I'm saying? But, um. I definitely think, like, you have to allow a female to, you have to give a a girl a, a place to feel feminine. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to give them that space to feel safe. Because if I don't feel safe, I might, you know, I don't know. Like, why should I listen to you? Why should I feel safe? Or why should I submit, you know, so to speak? I will submit if I feel safe, if I feel like you can lead me, you know, if I feel like your judgment is good. Mm -hmm. If your judgment is not good, which a lot of niggas (laughs) do you feel like that's the goal, though, to submit? I want a man to lead me. I want to be able to know, like, you know, he has the outline for what we are doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can be ambitious and chase my own goal, but like. I think the tone should be set by the man. Yeah. Like, I even was talking about this to my friend. Like, because I'm a Christian. But I've dated guys with different beliefs. If he checks all those boxes of me feeling safe and feeling like, you know, man, this man can lead me, I wouldn't mind maybe looking into another religion or something that he believes in. Because, you know, he's the umbrella of what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? And, like, Maybe he might want my children to wear a hijab. I don't know. Like, maybe that's something I'll look into. But whatever my man, like, wants to do, I feel like I'm going to consider it. So if he told you not to do music anymore, that's it? Like, if if it's the right person, you would stop? The right person would never turn you against your purpose or your passion. But... That's the reality of some people, right? No, for uh, sure. Especially when you Alicia Keys and you just, you know what I'm saying, getting hugged from the back. Like, shout out to Alicia, though. Like, I thought that whole situation was just entertainment, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I understood it completely. You don't got the like, natural view of cheating. You know, I, I, I was the same way. I'm like, bro, like, you guys are doing too much. And even Swiss really? Beats. No, that people were doing too much. Oh, oh, like, yeah, saying, yeah. like, oh, bro, like, I wouldn't let that happen. Like, bro. <laughs> They've known each other for how many years? Like, these are R&B singers. They knew y'all were going to tweak. Like Usher did a lot of shit there just to fuck with people, for sure. Um, but again, going back to the conversation, right? You said that, you know, a man has to lead. A lot of these girls, they don't want to be led. And that's okay. You may find a guy that will let you lead. There's, that's why there's 7 billion people. Everybody ain't got to agree with what I think, but I think that I want a man who's going to lead me. (laughs) I'm too strong of a woman. Like, I need to have someone that's strong enough to lead or even have the capability. Because if not, I might walk over you. Like, not purposely, but it's like, I I don't have much respect for you, you know? Like, I think having respect for your partner is so important. And um, that goes male or female. If you don't have respect for the girl you dating, you might treat her like trash on accident. You might think she bad. You might, you know what I'm saying, whatever, woo-woo. But it's like, if you don't respect her for real, come on out. That's solid. That's solid. I think I chase respecting my partner and evaluating if he could lead. Also good taste. He got to have good taste, man. Don't come around me. You don't know what music to play when you pick me up. You don't know how to throw an outfit on. Like, you can't pick a nice restaurant for dinner. Like, what we doing? Uh, I mean, you got to have some taste, bro. So how'd you get stuck in these toxic relationships? I think getting stuck is more so like a personal choice. You know, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, sometimes you just get caught up. Like, and you're like, I can't get away. It's a soul tie. I really believe that. Like, you, it's a spiritual thing. Did you feel a need to, like, fix it? Yeah, because I I felt myself deteriorating. So I'm like, I'm not me. You know, like, I have a song where I'm just like, this is not even me. A part of me has died. Literally, like, I don't even know myself anymore because I'm, you know, dealing with all this stuff. And it's like, you know, I just didn't want to deal with it no more. But it's like, I still crave that thing. What thing, you might ask? I don't know. Was it sex? I don't know if I can say it's the sex. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think it's just like, yeah, what makes you crave a toxic motherfucker? Like, that's a good question. What makes you crave a toxic motherfucker? I don't 
crave they ass no more. Like, but what made you crave it? My thing is, I think that it might be, you know, you're trying to fix it. You want so bad to fix this and you want so bad to hold on to something. Once again, holding on to something that's not good for you. But in that moment, it's like, damn, like, no, I need to fix it. I think I'm a person that just kind of wants to fix shit. So you I'll, see, I'll do that. I feel like I'll ignore a red flag if something is working. You know, it's like, oh, that ain't, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? We got all these other flags blowing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Do you believe in yellow flags? That's the flag that's like, hold up, but like, yeah, yeah it's all right. It's like, um, hmm, maybe I should yield. <laughs> like, I feel like an example. Is a yellow flag not being able to dress? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yellow flags are things you can change. You know, about a person. You know, it's like those variables. You know what I'm uh, saying? You be like, trying to change people. No, That's I don't. what it is. I no, don't. Now, now you know not to change people. Now Being, you know you okay, can't change a people. A yellow flag may be like, this nigga work at Popeye's. But like, he may be like, you know, the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. You, you don't know. Like, that's what I would say. It's like, it's not necessarily a red flag. It's just like, oh, shit, nigga. I might need to like. Hold on now, you know? Like, I'm going to just tread lightly. At the end of the day, it's just like, no one's when you meet them, is going to necessarily be perfect. It's like, but you're perfect for me because the things that are not necessarily all good, I can accept, you know? Because nobody walks into nothing perfect. Nobody, literally. We all got our icks. So it's like, if you find someone that, like, loves you and, like, cares, no matter what, that's cool. When we talk about these toxic relationships, are there multiple you think of? Or is there like one that sticks out? Definitely one that sticks out. Because I never put myself in that position again. Some people just keep making the same dumb mistakes. They might be like, I mean, I don't even know how you do that. Like, But if I bump my head on something, that's it. <laughs> like, I ain't, it's like, why am I doing it again? Um... So, yeah, I think once I had that thing that happened to me, I was just kind of like, yeah, no, I will never come back to this place. I don't know. I think, like, your self-esteem got to be in the dirt if you allow somebody to treat you a certain way more than once. Like, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times. What, what we doing? No dead ass, though. It's like, I don't know. I'm not giving nobody that many chances to hurt me. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I love myself too much. I get caught up, you know what I'm saying? And I think... Sometimes when I do love, I love to the point of like, oh, my God, I would do anything for you. Like, I lay it on the line. But when you take advantage of that, oh, I know my worth. Like, I'm getting the fuck out of there. Because, like, you're going to try to replace me or you maybe have tried to replace me. And, like, now it's my turn to get up and go. Oh, I'm about to get up and go. I'm never staying there again. I've, like, t I've literally stayed after somebody, like, I've stayed after somebody's cheated on me. And it didn't happen. Nothing happened other than more cheating, you know? So it's like, I don't know. Even though I'm not, like, a stickler about that, it's, like, more about how you went about it. Like, I've had a guy even hit me with the whole Jay-Z, like, I was just fucking them girls. I'm just going to get right back. Like, but, nigga, why, why did you go? Like, <laughs> why did you leave? And how do I know you're not going to do it again? Like, that's the thing, you know? It's like, damn. But I do understand, like, some guys can just do, like, I think a guy could cheat on you and still love you. Like, maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but it's true. Like, a lot of guys make stupid decisions based on a bad bitch. Like, <laughs> especially if you got, like, you know what I'm saying? You got emotion and you just able to do, you just got it like that. You might, you know what I'm saying, forget what you got at home. But I think I just, I don't know. I know who I am, and I know, like, your ass coming back, bro. Like, you're going to come back. They always come back. So what kept you around? I was living with him, and uh, I don't know. 
It's like easy. It was convenient. So I needed to save my money up for like <laughs> six months. <laughs> and once I did that, I kind of was like, you know. I respect it. But I, I didn't like plan on it all the way. I mean, during that time period, I was also very much like, oh, my God, I, I just wish he would change. I wish he would do right. And he just wasn't doing right. So this is the relationship that comes to mind when you think of the toxic shit. When I think of why, when I think of unavailable, when I think of that whole phase of just like writing a memoir of some shit that ain't working, you know, like that phase of my life was very pivotal in my like womanhood. It was just like, oh, okay, this is what love is not. How have you seen that continue to follow you to this day? I think holding myself to such a low regard in the past has made me like hold my crown so high now because it's just like, how did I tweak on myself that hard? How did I let this person make me feel like I was not enough? Like, didn't, like, girl, you know who you are? Like, you know what I'm saying? Damn near just like, what? It was just kind of like, I, 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 I can't let go of the person that I am today because I just know how it feels to, you know, not have that grip. And it's so uncomfortable when you just don't have, don't know yourself. When you don't have like, I don't know, that grasp of your, of your own identity, man. Like you can lose yourself in people. You know what I'm saying? It's very easily, it's, it's very easy to just, you know, feel like, man, this person is <laughs> everything and I'm going to give it everything no like keep some for yourself it's okay and that's why a lot of people so many times they'll find themselves in relationships and they completely forget about their passion Mm. they'll completely forget about everything that they love to do before they had this person and you see it all the time with artists i always and this is like i have a bad habit of doing this where i i'll say it out loud i'm like hey that person fell in love it's a wrap on them Mm. because Somebody falls in love, they have a kid and, you know, God bless them. Shout out to them, right? Because they're doing different things in life at a, you know, different positive things in life that are going to benefit them. Oh, love definitely takes you away. Do you feel like that's been the reason for your breaks? Because after Unavailable, you know, you look at the streaming platforms and it's like one or two songs. I equate my breaks um, to like just hating social media. (laughs) Like I don't. I can, like, I'm the coolest person in person or, like, when you meet me or, you know, I don't know, I can go on stage and go crazy. But, like, when it comes to trying to sell myself and, like, I don't know, post a meal or, like, a selfie, it's just, like, so head-ass sometimes. It's so ingenuine sometimes. But I know that's the game we playing. So I'm playing it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm playing it. But the ultimate goal is always just, like, you know, the message. Um, but yeah, that's what I would equate that to. I feel like it's the total opposite with me. Like, I've never let my passion go in a relationship to the point where it's been one of those things like that causes an argument. I explain to guys I date all the time. 90% of my network are men, you know, my manager, the producers, you know, the engineering people, the people who are putting together these deals. You know, it's, it's only so many women in this. So you have to be comfortable or dating me. You have to be comfortable with knowing I have like friends that are not the same sex as me. You got to be OK with that. And like, that's why I think. That's why I think. Having that freedom in a relationship is like the number one thing for me, because if you allow me the freedom to like have my own boundaries and like be respectful in this relationship to you. I will feel like I owe you the world because you a lot. You gave me that freedom. You gave me that choice. You know, like you didn't make me feel like I was in a cage. So I'm still confused on what drew you away from the music. Right. Because I, you had man unavailable, high acclaimed in the city debut project. And then after that, you look at everything else and you're going crazy now, but there's that two, three year gap. I think the reason for my hiatus before Unavailable was because of a guy. 
that toxic shit killed me. That's why when Classic found me or whatever, he was just like, you know, let's put the music together. Let's focus on one thing at a time. I was nowhere in the headspace to be an artist. <laughs> so, like, I took a whole year developing that project, and that's what came out sonically. But there was also a lot of things I had to deal with internally. So by the time it dropped and everything, I was good. Like I said, I think it was more so just like, damn, okay, I got to, like, be in y'all face every day. And that probably is, like, you know, kind of, like, I think that affected the whole, like, consistently or momentum, you know, that I probably could have did. Because you can drop one song and make 10 pieces of content to that one song. Or you could drop 10 songs and, you know what I'm saying, like, it goes either way. I wasn't doing none of that. <laughs> On top of, like, after my project dropped, I moved to Atlanta for, like, chasing the opportunity. Because, you know, they say in Atlanta, R&B artists are like, you know, it's like the prime prime real estate out there. We, we real valuable, you know. And uh, I tried it. I don't think I was with the right, right people, you know. Um, and I was also chasing, like, money over just, like, a team who understood me. I never, like, left Classic or nothing. I actually involved him in the situation. But, um, yeah, it just wasn't. It's kind of like a waste of time. I feel like, you know, as an artist, you can't chase opportunity all the time. You got to just chase being yourself and staying in these people's face. Like, as long as you, like, make quality music and you're able to stay relevant and just stay in people's faces... Those are the most important things. The money will come and, like, help boost you. But, like, you know, don't let that be, like, the the reason you're doing this shit. But um, I'm back in action, you feel me? I had to learn a lot of things to get where, to get here in this, in this head space that I'm in. And I feel good, you know? And shout out to, like, all of the people who are doing it, you know, right now. Like, that's been 10, 15 years in the game. And they just now seeing their success. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think this is like my fifth or sixth year doing music. And I still feel passionate about it. Like, I feel like that's something I'm very proud of. You know, I mean, I don't care what it looks like to nobody else. I care about how it feels. This shit feels good. So why am I stopping? Who do I owe anything to? You know what I'm saying? Other than myself. And then when I do win these same motherfuckers, that's probably looking like, damn, she's still doing this shit. Gonna be on my ass and congratulating me. The key thing right there was, you know, you can't chase the money. Because when you're chasing the money and you're chasing this idea of, okay, if I do this with these people, I'm going to end up somewhere. Right. You got to do what feels right for you. Yeah. And... I learned that early on because I would be looking at people's follower count mm -hmm. and then you look at the engagement and it's not getting anything. And mm -hmm. that's not a shade to anybody specifically, but it's more so you just got to look at that's who weird. you want to talk to, who you want to collaborate with, who you want to do work with. And if it fits the brand, then do it. Yeah. Because what's real is going to work. Every time. After the pandemic, you said that you had to reflect on why you're really trying to do this music shit. What was it you found? Well, after the pandemic, um, you know, I still hadn't released Unavailable yet. And I think I was like right in the midst of my whole relationship turmoil. You know what I'm saying? We had we was in the crib together every day. <laughs> And um, I don't know, I just think I was mentally everywhere. And I'm just like, you know, when you're in a toxic relationship, it weighs on every decision you make. <laughs> like, you can't, you damn near just don't even know. Like, you're just not thinking straight in no aspect of anything. So that's why it makes me appreciate just, like, my alone time so much more. You know, it's like, I'd rather just have a space of just, being by myself than being in a space with something that's filling me up with just toxic gas to the point where my brain feels like I'm on helium or something. You know, that's how I felt. I was very overwhelmed. Once you got through that period, why is it you chose to continue to pursue music? It makes me happy to, 
you know, be able to express myself through my gifts, you know? I mean, if I wasn't doing music, I don't even, what would I be doing? It wasn't always like that for you, though. You were pushed from school to career. Ideally, your parents. That was the track they wanted to put you on. Yeah, I mean, I got an education because, like, I mean, my whole family got educations. I think I was still always the eyeball. Like, I was the creative one. Like, I cut up my clothes, you know. I I just did I did unique things. And um, it wasn't always accepted. Like, I think it took for me to release music and, like, to actually have something going for my dad to even be like, oh, this is... Okay. It's an option. Yeah, you know, like, but it wasn't even considered anything. Like, it's like, what? You want to be a singer? That, like, what? Like, you know what I'm saying? What is that? And what does that look like? Well, Dad, I'm going to go out here and figure it out. And uh, <laughs> when I got to Chicago, I just felt like it was the perfect city. I came from the East Coast, you know, like, um, so it's not many opportunities. It's not, like, super rural, but, I mean, it's Maryland, you know what I'm saying? So. Coming to Chicago, I just felt like this is the time that I need to, like, explore this. And so, like, I don't know, fast forwarding to now, I still don't see anything else that can make me as happy. I've done it all. I've worked a lot of jobs. I've done a lot of things. I've had my own business, like, but I love music. How do you feel like the expectations of what your parents wanted for you influenced your idea of what success had to look like? I'm very hard on myself. Like, I have a really strong work ethic because of that. Um, I think all your parents want to do is see you, like, happy and see you accomplished in some way. But, yeah, I think it reflects in the way that I'm very much just, like, a perfectionist in everything I do. Like, even if it's not what they want wanted me to do, it's like, oh, but I'm still doing it at this excellent caliber. You know, I'm still, like, the top in my class, so to speak. And so as long as I hold on to that, like, integrity piece, I think it's all good. You've been everywhere. You've done it all, right? From Maryland to Chicago to Atlanta, back to here. What do you feel like you found about... What do you feel like you found out about jazz in Chicago that you couldn't find out in Atlanta or Maryland? I grew tough skin when I came to Chicago. Dating those hood dudes, right? Not even just the dating. Just like, you know, coming into myself, you know, it's like, you know, you got to be real here. You got to be authentic. You got to be who you are. That's the only way anything going to correlate or translate. Like, you know, and I think like... I came out of my shell in that way. People like to shit on Chicago and just say, like, it ain't shit here. And nah, nah, nah. like, when we don't come together, we could definitely do that. But all these creatives that came out of Chicago, all these great people, I wonder what shaped them, though, for real. What's so special about it that shapes these people, but then they leave? You got to think about that, right? That's a good question. Because there's a lot of people that they do it big, they reach the elite of the elite and they don't come back and it's kind of like you got to look at it in two perspectives right i think that a lot of people stay angry and they stay mad about people not coming back and not wanting to you know build but also a lot of those people had to deal with the same shit that a lot of people complain about right they they didn't get supported people didn't want to see them win why are they gonna and you know, there's there's two ways to look at it. There can be the why why would they want to come back and the why not come back and build what you didn't have. Maybe just a bit of like forgetfulness, arrogance maybe in there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, once you get once you get where you're going, it's kinda like it takes a, a very integral person to look back and say, Okay, let me, you know what I'm saying, sprinkle a little here. I don't know, at the end of the day, Chicago people are just real. I think it's, it's like a real, it's like real people here, you know, and that realism kind of can get in the way maybe, you know, like maybe some people are just too honest to the point where they like, man, like, I don't want to deal with that shit no more. I'm, I'm over here with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. How does the cult, but, okay, sorry, scratch that. How does like. Like, it's a cold city, you know what I'm saying? Like, people, 
they say like people from Chicago are just have like this chip on their shoulder. Like, you know, maybe that's why they feel like once they do get it, you know, it's like, okay, I'm got to be selfish now with it. Cause it took me so much to get this, you know, and like, I don't want to lose it all by trying to, you know, step back. I haven't really thought about it like that. I just really think that, and you know, maybe I just think it's more so why am I going to give back to the people that continuously told me that I wasn't shit? What do you feel like you've seen from the city, from your personal experience? Do you feel like you face that? That's the thing, like, no, nah, I feel like I ain't never felt like this city don't don't show me love and I don't feel cared about. Like, I think there's a limited amount of platforms for me to go on and, like, be heard, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think that I receive a lot of, situ- like, I don't receive a lot of hate or, like, non-support. What's up with this AI shit? <laughs> Why, uh, why'd you do that? My dad was like a teacher, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I've just always been fascinated with just anything about, like, you know, technology or, like, aliens and conspiracies. So, like, AI is just one of those things where it's like, oh, my God, we're finally seeing it happen. Like, this advancement is just, like, crazy. So, I wanted to just take advantage of it in the creative space, you know, see what it do. I feel like there's something that I didn't ask or there's something that people should know that, like, we didn't even touch on. There's, like, so many different sides to me, but, like, I keep everything kind of private on purpose. Like, I was going to reveal, like, where I worked on online the other day. I'm just like, I don't even know if I want, like, I like to be a mystery sometimes. I think it's power in having some type of, like, secret to you why do you want to give everybody everything like that ain't fun you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like people don't gotta know everything it don't make sense for everybody to know everything no that's not even fun sometimes people gotta draw their own ideas of you and those ideas are, is what's gonna keep bringing people back i don't care to explain myself to everybody and maybe that's my downfall i don't know but it's like, man, y'all better listen to these songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I want that to relate so deeply. Like, that's my goal to relate to people. But if I gotta tell you every single thing about me for you to be a fan or to be to support me, I don't know. It just seemed kind of like cooked. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all it ain't even supposed to be about all of this. Nowadays, artists gotta be influencers and stuff to like an unhealthy level, I feel like. It's like, man, I wish it was back. To, like, just being about the music a little bit. Did you have a lot of friends growing up? I was a popular loner. I won best dress in high school. Like, people knew the fuck out of me. But I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't think I was, like, always calling people and just, like, overly social. Do you think that feeds into the need for wanting to relate to people and the need for needing that? companionship from a significant other yeah i always want to feel seen does that make sense it's crazy right it's like a oxymoron or like i want to be seen but i don't want to show you <laughs> that doesn't even make that sense. sounds like the worst kind of person to date <laughs> that but you're supposed that, to just get that, me no 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 i've had it happen i've had that a shit per- don't make sense i've had a person that just gets it that shit you don't, don't have make to sense. i don't have to explain it they don't call us princesses for nothing and shit <laughs> like we like a little bit of romance and fairy tale in there so it just feels like if i have to tell you what to do it's like damn you know you should just kind of know. Go ahead and play what you need to plug. It's your girl Jazz, and we're here with Sad Boy Radio. This was so fun, guys. Check me out at J A A S X X on all platforms. And be on the lookout for that new heat because it's coming. Make sure you guys go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Sad Boys for real. Peace out. This is Sad Boy Radio. Can't pieces, who's to blame?